Appendix is a tubular structure which is located at the ileocecal junction. It is somewhere around 4 cm to 10 cm by and large, but it may be as long as uh, even 24 cm. At times it has been seen that when there is malrotation of the gut, situs, situs inverses. So appendix, you know, may be found on the left side and then diagnosis is confused that instead of pain of appendicitis, instead of being cited as the right iliac fossa, it may be cited in the left iliac fossa. So appendix is located 2 cm posterior medial to ileocecal junction. That means it is junction of the small intestine and the large intestine. As you know, each and everything which nature has given to human beings or for any creature, it has got a purpose. So appendix is supposed to be vestigial structure in human beings, meaning thereby that this is a rudimentary structure and it is a remnant vestigial structure of the past, you know, primates or uh, from which the human beings have been derived. But you should also understand that appendix has got a lot of lymphoid follicles, lymphatic tissue, that means it has something to do with immunity. It has been postulated that appendix has got a role to play in the human immunity. It has also been observed that those people who undergo appendicectomy, they do not suffer from any kind of a disease or problem. However, in one of the studies, it has been found that the persons who have got their appendix removed, they have a higher incidence, say about four times higher incidence of, uh, you know, diarrhea and loose motion, motions because of an organism called Clostridium difficile, called Clostridium difficile colitis it is called. So anyway, today I am going to talk to you about anatomy. So as I have already said that an appendix is a tubular structure which is located at the junction of small intestine ileum with the large gut and on the surface this pain is manifested at a point which is called McBurney's point located at the junction of outer third and middle two thirds of the line which joins the umbilicus with the anterior superior iliac spine. Appendix the maximum diameter is supposed to be say 5 mm to 6 mm and in case you know when we do ultrasound we find we can ascertain the length of the uh, 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 appendix and the diameter of the lumen. If the diameter is more than 6, uh, 7 mm that means there is some kind of a problem with the patient and maybe patient may be having appendicitis. Appendix has got an outer layer. You see the cecum has got three tinea coli, the longitudinal muscles. And these tinea coli, they converge at the ileocecal junction and part of it, you know, envelops the appendix. The circular muscle is inside. There is a submucosal tissue in the appendix which has got, you know, uh, epithel, uh, um, some kind of a loose connective tissue. And the inner layer is the mucosa. The mucosa has glands, you know, the columnar type of uh, columnar epithelial glands. And it has also got neuroendocrine type of cells which are called endocrine, which is called argentafin cells. Now, the as far as appendix is concerned, it may be located in various positions. You see, there is a entire abdominal cavity, it has got a small intestine, it has got a large intestine, and in the pelvis you have got urinary bladder, and in females you have got uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, etc. So what I mean to say is that it is a Pandora's box and you know it becomes sometimes difficult to find out the origin of pain. Now as far as appendix is concerned, appendix may be located in various position. One position is that it may be in front of the ileum. Appendix is located at the ileocecal junction where the ileum joins the cecum. So it may be located in front of the ileum. This is called pre ileal position. The another position is that it may be behind the ileum. So therefore, it is called the post ileal position. 
The third position is the pelvic position, one of the most common. This is about 32 to 34 percent of the people, they have their appendix located in the pelvic position. Then the another position of the appendix is the parasical position. That means the appendix is located along the lower border of the cecum. This is called parasical position. Or it may be subsecal, that means it's going down into the pelvis below this. It's, uh, you know, dropping down or what you call is lying in the pelvis below the cecum. This is called subsecal position. And the another one is the retrocecal position. Retrocecal position means that appendix is hiding itself even under the folds of the innate um, uh, uh, coli at times we have seen. So it lies behind the cecum. So this is basically a part of, uh, you know, anatomy of the appendix. But one thing is very clear that whenever a person starts getting pain due to appendicular pathology, it may not be located, it may not be sighted or it may not be appreciated at its place of where it is located anatomically. It may be, you know, the person starts the appendicitis pain because you must know that appendix is a structure which has got origin in the midgut. So in the epigastrium, if there is a pain, it will arise from structures which arise from the foregut. There are three, you know, parts of the gut in the developmental stage, which is called the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut. So foregut means your stomach adrenal pain you will find in the epigastrium, which I have already shown you in the diagram. And midgut pain, say the small intestine pain, will arise or will be appreciated best when it starts in the umbilical region and colonic pain will be in the hypogastrium because you see the entire abdominal cavity here I must tell you the abdominal cavity is lined by peritoneum what is the parietal peritoneum which invests the abdominal cavity from outside rather outside the abdominal cavity it lines the lining of the abdomen inside peritoneum, which is called parietal peritoneum. Peritoneum, parietal peritoneum lines the abdominal cavity. Okay. And there is another peritoneum, which is called visceral peritoneum, which is continuous the parietal peritoneum. It's called the visceral peritoneum, which lines the abdominal organs, say like small intestine, or it invests in the uh, colon, it lines the other organs, except those organs which are retroperitoneal, like Pancreas is not lined by peritoneum, it is a retroperitoneal structure. Similarly, the kidneys on both sides are not lined by the visceral peritoneum or parietal peritoneum in any case. The parietal peritoneum you should appreciate the nerve supply of the parietal peritoneum, the abdominal wall and the skin overlying it. It is a common nerve supply, sensory. So therefore, whenever there is a particular type of pathology in the peritoneum. The overlying muscles and skin will also be involved in the sense they share the sensory nerve supply. And therefore, a person, when there is appendicitis and the inflamed appendix touches the parietal peritoneum, then a person will start having pain in the right and fossa. Otherwise, if parietal peritoneum is not involved, there is a viscera because parietal peritoneum is very extensively supplied by sensory nerve endings, so it's quick to appreciate. It's just like finding a problem. Whatever is in our life, and a lot of people are there around, they'll be able to find the person concerned and somebody wants to, you know, want to find out the wrong person. But visceral peritoneum is sparsely supplied by nerve supply. It's very difficult for the visceral peritoneum. Whenever there is a pain, so appendix since it arises from the midgut and midgut pain is appreciated best in the umbilical region. So whenever there is inflammation of appendix, though the appendix is located in the right iliac fossa and appendicitis pain technically should be appreciated in right iliac fossa to begin with because appendix in the right iliac fossa, but it doesn't happen. Whenever person gets appendicitis, 
he has some kind of a very vague pain. You ask him, where is the pain? Person has got a meningitis to begin with. And doctor asks him, where is the pain? So he vaguely says, he's got a pain here, vague pain. He, the visceral peritoneum, is not able to localize that. Is not able to specify and appreciate the origin of pain because it is a medical structure and visceral peritoneum is not very normally, it is not extensively supplied by sensory nerve endings. It is only when the appendix, inflamed appendix, it progresses further and it touches the parietal peritoneum at its site in the right iliac fossa, the patient will say that I have got pain in right iliac fossa at McBurney's point. Okay, so therefore we'll discuss the pathology later on in the next lecture, the um, uh, causes and pathology and clinical features, investigation, treatment of appendix. But at this moment you should learn that appendicular pain can be confused with so many other pains. So when the entrained appendix touches the parietal peritoneum, right iliac fossa, then the person says, sir, I had the pain around umbilicus and it has shifted to right iliac fossa, migratory pain. The pain has migrated from umbilical region to right iliac fossa. The pain has migrated. And now he says, once the parietal peritoneum, because it is very richly innervated, the nerve endings, now the person will have not a vague pain, or a dull ache pain, now he'll have a very sharp cutting pain. You know, it is something which cuts because parietal peritoneum is very extensively served with nerve endings. And pain, is it a sign or a symptom? Pain is a symptom. Patient says, I've got pain, this is called symptom. And sign is when you touch the patient, you press the site of pain, you see, if you palpate the abdomen in right iliac fossa at McBurney's point and you press it, the patient will, you know, even with pain, suddenly you will say, I got pain. Or you will feel it pain and, you know, suddenly you will have a kind of a uh, reflex movement. This is called tenderness and tenderness, therefore, is a sign. The another sign is rebound tenderness, which we call robesing sign also. You have pressed the site of pain the site of appendix which is inflamed and touching the parietal peritoneum. You have pressed it, patient has pain. You keep your hand pressed over the McBurney's point and suddenly release it. When you release your hand, the patient again has pain and this is called rebound tenderness. What is it called? It is called rebound tenderness. And unfortunately, the appendix in rare cases is located on the left side because of, you know, malrotation of the gut. So although these classical features of pain around umbilicus with pain going into right iliac fossa will not be there. So it is, but now we have got so many investigations, you know, which we can uh, find out. Earlier we never have investigation like CT abdomen or ultrasound. Clinical, the patient's history, the clinical examination was the only factor or there was some kind of a open surgery which we used to call in old times when we did not have investigations at our disposal. So what we used to do, there's an tractor where we know there is something wrong, but abdominal cavity is a Pandora's box. Pandora's box. There's so many organs. There is a fallopian tube, there is a uterus, there is a ovary, there is a appendix, there is a ureter, there is a stone. So we did not have much of the investigation available to us. At that time, people used to open the abdomen, which used to find the diagnosis. Now we have a diagnosis on the face. There were so many investigations. This used to be a kind of a diagnostic intervention or diagnostic laparotomy even. So coming back to appendix, there are so many structures nearby. And sometimes the diagnosis, particularly in females, the woman may have salpingitis, they may have oophoritis. You know, all kinds of these kind of, any person even may have on the right side a ureteric calculus. Person has a stone in the ureter, but it mimics like appendicitis on the right side. Okay, since the appendix on the right side, so it is very difficult to appreciate at times, basically on the history and clinical rounds, there may be a stone which is just lying in the location where appendix is located, behind the peritoneum. Ureter is a retroperitoneal structure. 
so i wanted to tell you only this much and then in the next lecture i'll be talking to you about acute appendicitis today itself i'll deliver the talk okay thank you very much